guys welcome back from classic work I got a hopefully gonna be a pretty good series of videos here this is a 1972 International 500 C bulldozer y'all know me I'm a huge fan of International and uh, I picked this little gem up here uh, a couple of months ago and she's been sitting here ever since but I thought this would be a good chance to do a pretty big series on this dude because there's a lot wrong with it a uh, tremendous amount wrong with it probably should have passed it by kind of wrong with it so anyways uh the guy that i bought it from really really cool guy uh most time when you're buying used equipment uh most people will lie to you it's like oh yeah it ran when it parked you know all this kind of stuff now he actually told me what was wrong with it so long story short is it's getting water in the oil and the right steering clutch is locked up in it so that's all he knew about it pretty much he bought it from a guy i think he drove it like 60 feet and parked it in a shed and it's been sitting there for probably four or five years i got to doing some investigation on it and uh <clears throat> she's got a nice crack right here right in the side of the block so my guess is what happened was like the radiator was probably leaking and the previous owner, before the guy that I bought it from, put water in it, you know, not fix the leak. And uh, winter came along and she froze and busted the block. So that's my theory on it. So that, plus the steering clutches are probably messed up. This does have a torque converter in it. So I don't know if that's going to be an issue or not. Probably will be. Every hydraulic cylinder leaks on it and the hydraulic pump leaks as well. So it's a giant piece of shit pretty much but anyways i think it'll be a good one i love international anything so for what i've been told these are really easy to work on uh well i'll be the judge of that here in a minute and uh yeah we're gonna take this thing apart and uh, pull yank the motor out of it and hopefully uh we'll get all this uh get all this apart it's got some good things about it the undercarriage is actually in pretty decent shape the uh like the idlers here um i've still got lots and lots of meat on them the chain has got very little wear on the links here they're not wore into the pins and it's and the sprocket here has still got good good teeth on it so both sides are like this so i'd say the undercarriage uh you bulldozer guys out there may correct me if i'm wrong but i'd say that's at least 70 percent so that's that's good that's the most expensive part on this whole thing other than this little baby this is a bosch injection pump this is a noise diesel three cylinder i can't remember the cubic inch on it but uh i've worked on some 574s that had the four cylinder version of this and these are good motors wet sleeved engine and yeah so it should be should be pretty good so we're going to take a stab at her and uh, start tearing down into her. Me and Dad did crank it just to see if it would run. And a cold beverage or two may have been involved. And uh, yeah, she smoked like a tar kill. It, uh, a wide open throttle. She was running about 700 RPM. So something's hurting bad in that motor. Um, I don't know if an injector may have been stuck or the head may have stuck valve in it. Or I don't, I'm not sure what what probably would have caused that so we'll get into her once we pull the motor out so yeah this is going to be fun i believe but uh yeah wish me luck let's go ahead and get the roll cage off of here and start working on the hood
so got the hood off and from what I can tell is I don't know how in the world it's like the bell housing in the engine block or one thing maybe I think that thing bolts internally in there so I'm guessing I don't know this but I'm guessing that the uh, torque converter the bell housing and the motor all have all have to come out together so I'm gonna take the shield off right here was holding the hair cleaner on and I think this plate comes out this is the uh, back plate right here that goes into the floor pan so I think if I get the floor pan out and this out, I'll be able to look and see what I got to do from there. I still haven't figured out how I'm on. There's got to be some bolts that's holding the uh, the block here to the frame. And there's like a crap ton of crap down there. So I'm just going to yell at it and cuss at it for a little bit. And uh, I'll bring y'all back up to speed whenever I find something, I guess. Alright, so she looks a lot different the last time y'all saw her. So anyways, I got the radiator out. Sorry I didn't film that. It wasn't not too much to it. Just take the crane and fly the stuff out and you know. You know how it goes. But anyways, now we got a good look here. I've been trying to clean some of the belly pan out here. But uh, yeah, so we got, looks like, four bolts holding the front. Uh, you can't see them over there. We got two on this side. I assume there's two over there. We got to take the pump off and all that stuff. And I still, I did get the firewall off, but I still got to take the floor pan out. I ain't done that yet because I think the seats got to come out. So, yeah. So far, we're plugging along pretty good. I hope to get this thing out today. That's my goal. I'm going to try, even if it gets dark 30, if it, if it looks like I even have a chance of getting it yanked out, we're going to get it. So yeah just keep uh keep taking stuff off and uh yelling at it and cussing at it some more and we'll get her gone okay so we got some good news and we got some bad news i got the seat out got the floor pan out so all right let me see if i can figure out all this stuff this is the transmission this section i ain't 100 percent sure right in here i think the torque converter is in here but i don't think it is i think it's back that way closer to the bell housing um i may be wrong about that i hope i'm wrong about that but anyways we're going to try to break it right here because i don't have to take all this stuff off down here if this making any kind of sense so yeah that's that's what we're going to attempt so I think it'll be a lot easier taking it apart right there because the motor will be more well balanced and you know all that kind of good stuff the bad news is there's three bolts on the top up here I guarantee you there's three bolts on the bottom you know what that means we gotta take the belly pan off oh I probably should have guessed that before I even got into all this but uh it uh <clears throat> kind of rained here like for the last three days and uh yeah so that's gonna be a lot of fun getting up under there so good deal so i gotta crawl up under there and uh get them bolts out well take a good look at me because this is the prettiest i'm gonna be all day uh. Be a heavy equipment mechanic, they said. You'll make all kinds of money. Get all kinds of ladies. And tell me nothing about it being cold and wet. You don't get paid for working on your own stuff. Alright, see if we can get 
some good images of this. Ugh. Oh, ow. All right. So, all right. So here's the belly pan. It had one bolt in it right here. That was the only thing that was holding it. And there's one right there. So in theory, if I take that out, we should be able to get a come along on this, uh, where you drain the oil at, and chain it to something on the blade this way, and pull it out of these little slots right here, if you can see them. It should come forward. And this belly pan's got two sections, so we'll have to, uh, we may have to pull the one off the very back back there. I don't know if you can see it way back there. I hope not. We may can get to it like this, but I doubt it. So we may have to take that one off too. And yeah, that one's gonna be just as fun, looks like. All right. Anyways, I'm gonna take out one bolt out. We'll get the chain come along and I'll catch up with y'all. All right. So apparently the front uh, part of the, the belly pan is kind of stuck, but we need the back anyways. So I don't know if y'all can tell, but that's like, you know, like two and a half inches tall. So this is gonna be fun getting up in there. So, uh, I gotta do some weed whacking. Yeah. Oh, maybe there's a four leaf clover in here. Wouldn't that be something? Probably killed it. So, opened up about another inch, looks like. Uh, if I suck in, maybe I can get under there. Alright. I'm thinking, let's take these bolts out, and it should fall right out of there. Damn, the drawbar is going to fall too. That's lovely. Oh, man, I tell you. You know, this machine's not been that bad to work on if everything was right. I can tell a farmer on this damn thing because I love all the baling wire and uh, that bolt fits good enough and you know oh we'll we'll fix that tomorrow and all oh, that's kind of just just Mickey Mouse crap. It's basically what it is. All right, let's get these out. It looks to be 15 sixteenths. I've been wrong all day today, so. It's probably not. Uh, let me put down the redneck creeper. Uh, grab some sockets. It's bad when you get too much stuff out. You can't find anything. Uh, let's see if I'm even right. Oh, I guess right for once. Uh, I'm gonna try it with the deep well. So I got the two in the front out, I think, I hope. I'll try to get both of these out. And yeah, I figured that was going to happen. We're going to have to put a wrench on it, watch it. Same thing. You know, you can tell I'm not a bulldozer mechanic because a smart person would have drove it up on blocks. But uh, she wasn't drivable. So, I don't know. I don't even know what I'm trying to say anymore. I hope that's all that's holding it up. Oh, well, she's falling. Kind of. It's not separating. Yeah, that one's out. And of course we're gonna get the impact stuck. I could have guessed that. This is the stuff they don't show you in them shows. Ah, oh, come on. You know, like, hey, let's go work on the truck. Now you gotta get a shovel to get the daggum impact out. I can't do 
getting started either because it's done fell down in the socket. <sighs> My life. Pretty sure that draw bar is gonna fall too when I take this out. Let's take it out with a wrench. I think that'll be a lot safer. Okay. Oh, what's somebody saying? Why didn't you pick a better time of the year to work on this thing? It's because I'm stupid, that's why. You can't argue with stupid people. Just the way it is. There we go. All right, that's a belt. Right, one's out too. We got one more bolt here, and I guarantee you, the draw bar and everything is gonna fall. So watch your toes, boys and girls. Let me get out of the way a little bit. I do not want to get smooshed by this. It looks heavy. Oh, that's on tight. Got to the way here. Put the open end on it. You know, a smart person would probably get a jack too, but like I said, I'm not too smart. Sketchy. Um. Hmm. Hmm. Let me grab a block. Well, I got a feeling. Don't ignore your feelings. And don't ever ignore your feelings. That's God's way of telling you, hey, you shouldn't be doing that. You know better. You know better. And you do it anyway. Man, that bolt's long. Okay, that could have been worse. All right. Oh, draw bar is being held up by something else. The good news is the whole thing fell out, so we're good there. Getting that dude out of there might be a challenge. All right. I like their spacers. I like that. Lots of bolts or nuts. Okay. All right. Draw bar stayed in. That's good. You need a perfectly sized dirt. We got it here. And we got nothing but the best stuff here. Okay, I guess now we can go get Neil. Let's see if we can't drag his turd out of here. Oh, that'll work. Yeah, I don't see any trouble with that. I'll just grab a chain through here and there and drag that dude out. You know, a smart person, too, would have not put the block on the redneck creeper. Now we gotta tear it out from under here. Like I said, it's tough being dumb. Uh, there we go. Okay. Now we're gonna get the back of it. y'all can see this if I can get my camera to focus here it's mighty close all right so we're up under here looking at the, the bell housing that's the bell housing there okay so there's six bolts 
but I got to looking right there there was two bolts in each side under here and they've been left out so I'm pretty sure somebody's been into this thing before so that's kind of not a good sign the you can see the torque converter if I can get a good pitch out of it hold on there's a torque converter right there and I think as far as I can tell if y'all can see up in there it just splines in there I hope I hope there ain't nothing I gotta take apart but yeah definitely has had some backing up action with the belly pan not secure got lots of trash in there but nothing looks hurt but yeah this is an utter piece of crap where everything's kind of i mean don't get me wrong it's not too bad but it ain't fun i'll say that i think we could have taken this out without taking the belly pan off it's just been a little more difficult but at least these bolts are easier to get to now i think i made the right choice so all right we're gonna take these out i'll probably take all of them but the two up top out and then we'll go from there i'll start working on the front maybe we'll get this dude pulled out of here we got like lines to take off and junk like that but we're getting there slowly but surely okay let me bring y'all back up to speed a little bit so i got the hydraulic pump out it was actually probably the easiest thing that we pulled off so far more bad news on this thing this front clip right here this whole thing has got to come off before the motor can come out so what I'll wind up doing is we'll take the crane and hook to the engine and uh, then we'll take this piece off that way that the crane will support the engine and everything back there I've drained the oil out of the trans mission and uh, yeah she had a lot of water in her probably the first gallon that came out was pure water so I gotta figure out where in the world it's getting in at so we gotta we gotta fix that I took the bottom cover off I wish I'd have got that on film it was it was magical but uh yeah that all kind of stuff happened but uh I think it's it's beer 30 now and I'm tired of getting ready to clean up because we got a whole mess of stuff out and I'd love to get it all back in the truck before it gets dark. So I thought I was going to be able to get it out today, but I got caught up on some other stuff and just not enough hours in the day, if you know what I mean. Well, we're definitely on our way. I got everything unhooked off the, the motor for the most part. All the wiring and junk is all thrown up in here. We're going to omit all this. There's going to be a lot of like voltage regulator delete and that solenoid delete and all these wires going to be pretty much gone everything for just the gauges is going to stay and we're going to have one wire that goes to the alternator and one wire that goes well two wires that go to the starter and that's about it i'm just going to simplify a lot of this stuff the old voltage regulator i'm guaranteeing it was because this thing had a generator on it at one time and somebody's converted it over to alternator which is the greatest thing they could have done but uh yeah we're definitely making some headway this thing is a little bit of a pain in the ass um not so much that the machine's difficult to work on it's the folks that worked on it before me have really really cobbled some stuff up i've had to cut bolts off and it's just it's a good time if you know what i mean but we're going to get it. I, I have confidence in it. And maybe next day we work on this. It's going to be next week. But uh, we'll get it out. About another two hours of yelling at it. And it'll be almost ready to come out, I think. I'm going to go back. Coming up. Look all right. And yeah, all right, swing to you. I don't know why that hook does that. It does, huh? Yeah. I don't do that. I, I ain't figured it out yet. Sometimes it'll do it, sometimes it won't. Me and Lee worked on that hook one day trying to get it to, but 
it's the cable. The cable gets a twist in it. See, now it's going back the other way. It's a heavy little motor. Here's a truck popping. Uh, let's take a look at it for a second. Why she come out of there? Good lord. put on a pallet. Yeah. That torque converter does look funny. That, yeah. That, Square looking. Well, that, that's the pressure plate. I need to get that thing out of that mud. Yeah, I'll get it out. It fell right on its face, too, didn't it? I finally got it out. That thing it was. was moving down. Reed. Oh, is that why it, I got you? That bell housing and stuff on this thing is weird. It's heavy, man. Yeah, that's definitely some big parts, isn't it? I think you're going to need to get that hydraulic pump right. It's about wore out. Is it? All right. Surely we can still find some of that stuff. That thing, look how tall it is. Like, like the old pan ain't big as nothing on it. That's oh, big. that's blocked. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. That's crazy. Yeah, she's out. Well, we got her sitting here at the entrance to the shop now. And we'll, uh, we'll see what kind of good stuff runs out of the pan here. Um, the owner told me it was getting water in the oil, so we will soon find out. tight wow all right let's get a close up here see what kind of good stuff we get well there's a little water in there That's a good sign. Definitely got a little gray texture to it instead of black. So, I don't know. I don't know if it's cracked into the water jacket or not. It's hard to say. Have to tip it up. Be sure to get all the good stuff out of there. That looks a lot better than I thought it would. I sure thought there was going to be at least, you know, a quart of water run out before the oil, but the engine hadn't been started and oh probably four or five months so it should have separated but yeah I didn't see any didn't see any metal in there that I could tell so we're looking up so it's got a magnet on it I don't know if it does or don't let's find out no magnet. All right, so I can't tell by that. All right then, well we'll just, uh, I'll get the rest of the oil remaining out of it and we'll start working on the top end. So, as you can already tell, I'll take the valve cover off first. Just to see if we got a broken rocker arm or something. But when it ran, it didn't sound like anything was bad. But she didn't run worth the flip either. I kind of think the injection pump is probably full of rust, if I were to guess. And uh, it wouldn't allow the fuel to, to get to the, either that or I had an injector stuck, or two it was not running worth a snot. So, let's see what we got here. Eee. Lots and lots of moisture. But, it looks okay. Other than junk growing in here. Just old greasy hole. Take a look at that for y'all. Yeah, she uh, kind of looks like uh, white gravy a little bit, doesn't it? <laughs> That's wild. But yeah, I don't see any. Of course, we ain't pulled them out yet. I don't see any bent push rods or anything. 
I don't know. It's hard to say. I could give the valves a little smack just to test the waters a little bit. Let's see here. Yeah, that one. Yep. Yep. Yeah, they're all broke. Broke loose, that is, not broke. But yeah, that's not too bad at the International. Adjusters on there, flathead screwdriver and like a 9 16 That's common. The DTs are famous for that. It don't look too bad other than uh, moisture trying to grow sawmill gravy inside of it. All right, we'll keep going. I'm gonna take the exhaust off and the intake and we'll get ready to pull the injectors out and pull the head. So I'll keep going at her. I don't see anything obvious yet. It's good. Well, more good news. Whoever put this back together had no exhaust gaskets for it. So they decided to RTV it to the head on the exhaust. And uh, yeah, that don't work in case people don't know. And another great find is a uh, I'm not supposed to be able to see my finger through there. So I'm gonna need a new, unless I decide to repair that one, I'm gonna need a new exhaust manifold. So the joy continues. Um, I may leave the intake on here and just see if I can get the head off. And then we'll see about getting the timing cover off. All right. So let's keep going, I reckon. Okay, so I'm working on getting the injectors out now. And I got one of them out, but I've tried prying on both of these and they're pretty stuck. Probably has something to do with all the moisture that's on these injectors. Surprisingly, this one here doesn't look to be in too bad a shape. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and pull the head without taking the injectors out. As long as we don't lay them on the injectors, it should be fine. So I'm going to go ahead and pull the rock the uh, uh, rocker arm assembly off here and uh, then I'll start busting the head bolts off should be able to pick it up I'm going to leave the intake on it I think I think it'll clear all these injector lines yeah we should be able to go that way I don't hit anything over yonder no we're good alright so I'll get uh, taking the rocker arm assembly off and everything like that and we'll get the head bolts out and then we'll pick this dude up. running away. That gasket looks fairly new too. Can, you know, despise everything. All right, the head gasket is definitely blown. 
Um, so we had a compression leak, looks like. I'll bring you in on a, on a close up so you can see here. She don't look, she don't look good. I ain't gonna lie to y'all. Don't look good at all. But it's not bad. So right there is one part. I don't see it blown to the outside. But yeah, that was definitely hurt there. Um, other than lots and lots of rust everywhere. That's from running with no running with water for coolant. But yeah, she don't she don't look too good down in the water jacket there. But uh yeah, we'll get this uh we'll get this gasket off real quick and see how it looks everywhere else. There's the dial pins. That's why we could knock it to the side there. Alright. So let's set y'all back up. I'll take this head gasket off. Well, you can see she looks a lot different than she did not too long ago. I uh, worked on into it and we got rained on a little bit and it got dark and I got to drinking beer and forgot to film and this and that and the other. But anyway, she's tore down block now. So you have to trust me that just about everything's out of there except for the liners and the cylinders. And uh, But everything else cover... Uh, front cover there, timing cover, everything's off except for the push rod on this side and like the old canister and yeah, whatever. But anyways, I'm going to show you all kind of the good, bad, and the ugly of everything that's here. So, all the rods, as far as I can tell, they're all in okay shape. The bearings, every bearing in there, you can see a little bit of copper there on the upper, was wore. Some of them worse than others, like this one here wasn't too bad. A little bit of copper on the upper side here but uh, the mains look pretty rough um, let me see if I can find one real quick this one wasn't too bad say I had like a groove right here in the center this was probably the worst one uh -oh. I would drop it you can see she's got a pretty good pretty good groove in her and all the way down to the copper except for one spot over here which wearing it with the copper is normal so but that groove i have to show you the crank here in a second but anyways we got some other dilemmas here when i pull the camshaft out this bearing here is toast the other ones don't look bad i'm gonna look, take a really really good look at them but this one no es bueno so According to my dad, these things here are kind of a pain in the butt. The American versions of International have knock-in bushings, meaning you have a tool more. You can just beat these out with a with a punch, more or less, and then you have a tool that you can slip a new bearing in there, and then they're right as rain. You can slip the camshaft in there, and you're good. These are not like that. When you press this insert in there, it shrinks slightly, and you have to hone it. So. You're supposed to line hone these, and I don't have a line hone, and I don't know anybody that does, so that's going to be a little bit tricky. Um, I'll have to come to that bridge when I cross it, I guess. We still got to fool with this crack that's right here, unless I get another block. And if I get another block, maybe the bearings will be better in it, but they could be worse too. It's kind of a kind of a mixed bag of stuff right now. Um, I would love to fix this block. Um, I've got a couple of ideas. We could, uh, I know everybody in the comments is going to say, JB Weld, you know, I, I personally don't, don't want to do that. I'd rather have a more, uh, permanent, not well, maybe permanent is not the right word, a more better fix. You know, I've heard of people doing iron powder on blocks before with the settling setup, and I've got one. You know, we could drill the ends of the cracks out and grind it out real good and iron powder it back up. I would love to try that. And then, I could either get it magnafluxed and see if the crack is gone, or I could strap the head back down to it and plug up all the uh, water jacket holes and pressurize it and see if it'll leak that way too. Like pressurize it with air. And if air can't get through it, I don't think water could. You, you know, you still have to be concerned about the engine warming up and all that kind of stuff too. But 
come to that bridge when we cross it, I guess. Let me go show you all the crank real quick. Oop. So here's the camshaft. Even though that bearing was chewed up, this here is where it was riding. There isn't a scratch on it. It looks fine. I don't see anything wrong there. So that's amazing. I can't hardly believe that. But the camshaft, as far as I can tell, is in fine shape. The lobes are not flattened. A little bit of wear, but I mean, they're still in good shape. I don't see anything wrong with that. The head, we've got pitting on number two cylinder here. Water must have stayed down in the exhaust for a while. I don't know if that's going to hurt me yet or not. The crank here, there are spots that you can feel in certain places. It's not bad. I think it's, you can turn it, but you can definitely see them. They're not deep. I wouldn't say that's any more than about seven or eight thousandths. So these are probably have to be turned 20 under on the mains if I were to take a guess. But the rest of them, they're fine. Most of the throws, that and uh, a little, a little iffy there, but I think it's, it can be fixed. The bad thing about the crank here was that we had some lateral movement in it, so the thrust bearings were shot. So it makes me believe that there may be a groove in where one of the thrust bearings was. This one may only have one thrust bearing, I can't remember. But uh, yeah, that's not a good sign. But other than that, uh, we still got a wore out piece of crap. I'm amazed that it ran. We If if we do get it back together, I think we're going to have us a, a real one. We're going to have a live one. Um, I've noticed that about motors. It's not so much if they're good or bad. It's just if they're lucky. And uh, so we got a fighter on our hands if I can fight it enough to get it going again. But that's probably where I'm going to leave this video. It's already long as... Oh gosh, long as the day is long. I didn't mean to go into all this, but here we are. This seems like a good stopping point. I'm going to clean the block up, and uh, we'll see about what we're going to do to repair it, and then we'll go from there. The bad thing is, you know, since this is a bulldozer, uh, let me just walk out there and show you. Okay, I'm going to try to wrap this up real quick. So, you know we've been here. We've already gotten the motor out and everything. But you got to remember, guys, this is the small part of this repair, more or less. Um, I haven't done anything to the transmission yet. I know that joker was full of water, so all that's got to be flushed out. The bow steering clutches are probably stuck if they're not completely worn out. So I don't know what any of that looks like. I haven't looked at the fuel system. I haven't looked at the final drives. I haven't looked at any of that every cylinder has to be repacked because when it did run every one of them leaked um and no telling how many hydraulic lines i'm going to have to replace and i got a bunch of electrical stuff to deal with and yeah it's not going to be pretty um projects like this can run into a lot a lot of problems so anyways if y'all enjoyed it guys i hope y'all got something out of it and hopefully we'll get this show on the road pretty much we got a lot of bad news, but we got some good news too, I guess, um, that I think everything that I've seen that I can fix it. It's going to take some time, but we're going to get after it. But guys, if y'all enjoyed it, um, give this video a like, share it with your friends. Let me know in the comments some of the stuff that y'all would have done different, um, it, even if y'all would have even pursued something like this. Because in realistic terms, it is a toy, but it's a toy with some capability. So anyways, um, till next time. Y'all take care and God bless. I'll see you next time.